Hi, I'm Faisal Rizvi. With me today is Case Van Huff, CFO and Executive Vice President of Business Development with Diamondback Energy. Today, Case and I will talk about all things ESG, and I'm excited to hear Case's thoughts on the ESG movement from an ENP company perspective. Thank you, Case, for being with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Great. Now, Case, Diamondback Energy has been in the news for all the right reasons. Your company is in an acquisition spree, but you also seem to be ahead of the curve in terms of ESG progress. Can you tell us more about um, Diamondback's approach towards ESG and why and how was it an early mover in the ESG space? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I, I think the way we, you know, we frame it is is our social and environmental license to operate as right. a public operator in North America mm -hmm. uh, is is based on doing so in the most environmentally responsible manner. Right. And you know, when we talk ESG. I think the S and the G are very important, but but for oil and gas, it's really about your environmental performance uh, that drives a lot of the you know a, a lot of the investor demand. Mm -hmm. and, and and I think you know generally. The shareholders own the company, right? right? And the shareholders are saying, "We need you guys to do better." Mm -hmm. And and I think you know we've we're a very competitive company. We've obviously been very acquisitive, Absolutely. Um, and we take that that personally. We mm -hmm. want to do the best. And right. and what we've what we've done and realized over the last couple of years is that you know first we studied, you know what are our missions? What do they look like? Where are they coming from? Right. And, and we finally have enough data now to say, you know, here's the breakdown of our scope one emissions. Mm -hmm. And here's how we can tackle each of those right. those line items. And so mm -hmm. putting putting the right people in charge and, and building a, a true, you know, I won't call it a sustainability team. They're not called that yet, but but putting engineering experts in charge of, of solving this issue for us and, right. and this issue for the industry, you know, has been a, a big change for us over the last year. And and we're starting to see the benefits of that now, uh, you mm -hmm. know, in terms of the numbers. Absolutely. Thank you, Case. Now. As a major operator who has significantly grown its acreage in the Permian Basin, uh, what do you think are some of the advantages of adopting a proactive approach to ESG, especially for an ENP company? Yeah, I mean, as, as a larger company, you have a bigger balance sheet, you have the ability to, um, you know, move things around. Let's just say an area is flaring too much, but mm -hmm. you have you can build production in another field. Mm -hmm. You know, we've we've done that in the past. We've purposely right. avoided, mm -hmm. uh, you know, bringing wells on in areas where right. we're tight on. Mm -hmm on midstream takeaway and, mm -hmm. and, and that's the advantage of scale, right? right? If you're one company with one field and you need to make your volume forecast every month and every quarter, mm -hmm. we do too, but we have right. the ability to move things around. So I think right. I think generally, um, you know, looking at acquisitions through the lens of a, an environmental responsibility right. perspective is, is new. I won't say it's the number one driver of, of doing an acquisition, but right. but it is something we've, th we've thought about and, right. and, and it is something you know, we look at it before we do a deal is, mm -hmm. is you know, what kind of midstream is in place right. and, and what, you know, kind of flaring are we going to be dealing with, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, the, in the near term. Right. Also, Case, um, I want to talk to you now about, we know there's a lot of pressure for climate change, there's pressure from investors, from the administration, but what, according to you, are some of the key trends that are really driving the ESG efforts in oil and gas businesses? Yeah, you know, I was pretty vocal about this in, in my, my talk earlier. I, mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, to, to us as, as a public oil and gas operator that's doing what we're doing, right. you know, from, from an environmental perspective mm -hmm. to be, you know, vilified by, by you know, Washington, D.C. that doesn't quite understand what we do. Um, you know, the, the, the barrels that Diamondback, Pioneer, Conoco, all the Permian producers mm -hmm. produce right. are some of the most environmentally responsible barrels in the world in the most certain regulatory environment in the world. And, and I think that's sometimes lost on, on you know, politicians who have a different mentality. Um, now, I got to try to separate that from reality, which mm -hmm. is, you know, we're doing a, a really good job and, mm -hmm. and our investors are happy with it. Right. And they're the ones that own the company and, and right. driving the, the movement there. Right. Thank you, Case, for that insight. Now, there's been a lot of discussion around sustainability reporting. We've had a lot of people talk about that in the recent times. What steps can ENPs take to tell their ESG story? You know, how can they ensure more transparency with their ESG reporting? Yeah, that's a great question, too. I mean, our, our sustainability report, mm -hmm. we came out with our first one right. uh, three years ago, and, right. and now it's become, you know, a behemoth of a document, which mm -hmm. is important. Absolutely. Um, and, and it's grown over time. You know, I think what what my hope is and what I think a lot of our peers hope is, is that the sustainability reporting can get more uniform, right? right. Just like a balance sheet, cash flow statement, an income statement, mm -hmm. we'd like to see, you know, metrics more clearly defined mm -hmm. and all of us abide by those same definitions, right. which 
you know, industry groups like AXPC, who we're, we're a member of, that's a large independent producers, right. have, uh, you know, worked together to mm -hmm. set these metrics. And, and now I think we're finally set, moving towards, you know, some form of, of universal sustainability reporting for oil and gas, which, which will help. Right. Well, that brings us to the end of our discussion. Thank you, Case, for being with us today. On behalf of Heart Energy, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, and pleasure to be here. Thank you. For more Heart Energy videos, follow our social media channels.